Hello fellow bookmates, let's talk about all the books I've read in June. So in June, I feel like I'm back, you know, I read 11 books, which is what I read like in two other months this year, but like couldn't hit it quite otherwise and I feel like I'm back and I read so many good books. I broke out of my usual fantasy spiel to an extent uh, which makes me quite happy because I feel like I'm getting tired. So I just wanted, wanted to try something new. So we have a lot of thrillers this month, some fantasy, some sci-fi and it's all just very interesting so just stick around for the ride. Some of these books I have made extensive videos about so in that case I'll let you know and I'm just gonna talk like more or less and um, maybe not go so deep into my thoughts but others I definitely need to discuss because well, we've never talked about them yet. So the first book I read in June was When No One Is Watching by Alyssa Cole. So this is an adult thriller and it's kind of one of those social um when you think about social commentary horrors it's kind of like that. It's like the thriller slash horror genre and we follow a black woman who always lived in this um, neighborhood in Brooklyn with her mother and like it's been traditionally historic darkly black neighborhood but there's a lot of new people coming uh, into the neighborhood and a lot of old people leaving selling their houses and it's all about gentrification and it's like a gentrification with a twist because the main character feels like there's something nefarious going on and she just feels like it's unnatural how quick people are leaving and she feels like her neighborhood's being overtaken so that's the basic premise i really 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 enjoyed this uh, this audiobook i gave it a 4.5 stars and I think it was really really high suspense really well structured and built it was a bit slow in the beginning but like it was on purpose you know why you were there you know what's, what was up I just really 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 enjoyed the social commentary aspects it talks about a lot of important themes such as racism gentrification eugenics all of that really interestingly the end had me on the verge of my seat it felt like re like reading a movie basically you know one of those like really high stakes adventure horrors it kind of felt like that i actually have a whole video about five reasons why you should read this book so if it sounds at all interesting check out that video for like five unique things about the book that i think people might enjoy or if they enjoy those things and um, they might enjoy the book but i really thought this was like a really good book. I was impressed as well by the author because I read some of her romance novels and it was a definitely very different feel. Like I felt it was two different authors. Not that one was bad, it's just very different because it's a different genre and I really, really, really am impressed. Like good job, like really well done. So the next book I read was The Seep by Chana Porter. So this is an adult sci-fi novel and it's quite a short book. I listened to the audiobook as well, but it was absolutely fascinating, right? So we open with a dinner party and it's kind of like, what do you do when the world ends? You throw a dinner party and all kinds of weird things go on. So it's about Earth uh, in the future, I guess, or like alternative Earth. And we get invaded by this alien species called The Seep. And they don't have corporal bodies, so the way they interact is they like seep through you, I guess. I guess that's why it's called the seep. You like drink water or eat food or can, you can take it directly and it kind of like merges with human bodies and it completely transformed the society. It literally eliminated any kind of violence, any kind of poverty, all negative things are gone. The book is about how people live in a perfect world. Where do they get purpose if there's literally nothing to be fixed? Where do they get inspiration? How does, how does art work? How does music work? how does society work basically if every problem can be fixed like this what is the purpose of it and you know if you can live infinite lives if you can never die you can re be reborn all kinds of things I absolutely loved it it was also like it was like that grand discussion on one level on the other hand it was a very personal story about grief and moving on so our main character she's a trans woman and her partner decides to be reborn so you can basically like shed your adult body and be reborn as a baby and because her partner and gone through a lot of traumatic things she wants to do that uh, for herself so because of that the main character has to let go and basically let go of someone that she thought would be their life partner and move on with their life with her life and it was a beautiful beautiful book I 
got so much out of it I thought it was really well done and just in such a short book as well it hit on a lot of important topics and it definitely talks about being abandoned and how to cope with that or maybe feeling like you're abandoned but when you're really not and about purpose so much I just thought, thought this one's brilliant uh, I give it four stars and I think like really I would love to read a bit more books like this when it comes to sci-fi it's definitely different than what I'm used to but in a good way and personally I would really recommend it if you're into that kind of thing Next I listened to Dear Martin by Nick Stone. So this is a YA contemporary and we follow Martin who's a black boy in high school and it's about him writing letters to Martin Luther King and trying to cope with what society throws at him really. It's a lot to do with how young black people are treated, especially young black boys. Um, he gets kind of entangled in a couple of altercation with police but it's really about his daily life and like what happens to his peers as well it was very 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 well written the audiobook was really well performed it was extremely emotional I guess and I would really recommend reading this if you wanted to learn a little bit more about Black Lives Matter or just wanted to get a new perspective or just looking for like a hard warming touching maybe a bit difficult at times audiobook this one was really good and it was very well performed and i think you looked at it from different angles as well so it was really really good i ended up giving it five stars and i would really recommend so the next three books i read were for a video so it was a reading vlog where i read sapphic books and the first book i read for that was a dark and hollow star by ashley shuttleworth so this book is an urban fantasy set in toronto we follow a world where there are fae and they are kind of like living in this underground magical society uh shadow hunters and then we also have um like old gods who used to rule the world so think like greek gods and stuff the main plot is that there are a series of murders on ironborn and ironborn are like fae human mixed people i guess so um there's a series of murders and uh, the main gang is trying to figure out what's up but like i said this has a sapphic romance and also a gay romance as well so this is a very queer book which is perfect for pride i love this book i gave it 4.5 slash 5 stars on goodreads and i thought it was really really well written just what i needed made me really happy and i would highly recommend it it was very well written i cannot wait for the sequel it just has so much room and potential and i don't know it scratched that urban urban fantasy itch i had i guess for the same video i also read the unbroken by cl clark so this is a high fantasy high military fantasy and we follow terrain who's a soldier that was she was born in like one of the colonies of the empire and as a young child she was plucked and put into military that happens a lot and then our other character is Luca, I think, and um, she's the princess of the empire. But uh, when she, her parents died when she was very little, so her um, uncle actually took power. And it's about war, revolution, all of that good stuff. I didn't dislike this book, but I thought it was just okay. I think I gave it about three stars. Don't know. What, I thought it was because I had um a fatigue with fantasy i thought maybe i was reading a bit too much fantasy and i needed to explore and expand my boundaries and all of that but i'll tell you something in a minute that will kind of contradict that <laughs> so i thought that was the reason why i didn't love it i thought it was well written i liked the characters i it was interesting what was happening like when i was reading it it was like okay i was enjoying myself i guess but i just didn't want to pick it up i dreaded thinking about picking it up it took me ages to finish and it just I don't know it just left this like uh, taste in my mouth I don't know if I want to continue probably not um I just feel like there's so many other books I could be reading but I can see how people would love this and it's a, probably for some people I did enjoy the romance it was very slow burn I liked her main as a character and maybe Luca as well but not necessarily I did appreciate that Luca had a disability and um, she had hurt her leg when she was young and now she has a limp and has to use a cane so I thought that was good because it was like brought up multiple times and it was actually impacted her life on day to day um, and it wasn't something that was just discarded uh, once the um, diversity uh, checkbox was ticked so I did appreciate that and there were many things good about this book I would not say that it was bad by any means just for some reason it did not gel with me it did not scratch that itch you know what I mean it was just like 
meh, it was fine. And the last book I read for that video was The Jasmine Throne by Tasha Suri. So this is another high fantasy. This one was a new release. I think it came out in June, uh, if I'm not wrong. And this one is by a South Asian author. So it's inspired by... I think Indian mythology, but I'm not 100% of like culture and that kind of thing. And we follow a princess who has been exiled basically and imprisoned in this old temple um, because of something she did to spite her brother. And then we also follow the handmaiden who is taking care of her uh, in that temple. And here's the thing, I know I was said I was fatigued with fantasy, but then I'm thinking maybe that's not true because I read this book and I loved it so much. It was just so good. I think everything about it was brilliant. The writing, the storytelling, the freaking world building was out of this world. I love the characters. I just, I, the world spoke to me. The mythology, the world building really spoke to me. It was so complex. It had multiple religions. It was really reminiscent of epics like Game of Thrones and all of that with the complexity of the world building. I think this is a YA, but um, it was tagged as adult by some people on Goodreads, so I'm not actually sure. I loved it so much. I love the characters. I like the romance. I think the first half maybe was a bit more interesting for me and the second half it, it wasn't maybe as amazing, but all of it was really good. I'm so excited for the sequel. I need it right now. I want to know what happens. I just I loved really how uh, morally great the characters were, all of that. If you want to learn any of my full thoughts on all of these books, I talk about it for like 30 minutes on my vlog, so you can check it out. But yeah, this one was amazing. I gave it five stars and I'm like really, really, really loving it. Next up, I read The Mermaid of Black Conch by Monique Ruffy. So this is a historical fantasy and it's one of the mermaids books. If you don't know, I'm on a hunt for a good mermaid book and I just cannot find one. In this one, we follow a mermaid of the coast of the Caribbean and one day she gets kidnapped and is taken by Yankee men. I didn't hate this. Probably in comparison to some other mermaid books I read, I actually kind of liked it, but I just thought it was underwhelming. I gave it three stars, I think, because it was just so middle of the road. I appreciated how unique it was in the storytelling because there were like dual timelines and the audiobook was really well performed like with the accents and everything like it really transports you. It was definitely pretty in a sense that from storytelling angle is different um, but I just didn't care for the story because I didn't care for the characters but the whole mermaid aspect was interesting um, with the transformation and everything and where she came from. All of that was good but yeah, Underwhelming, another entry on the Underwhelming Mermaid books. Next up, I read Sleeping Giants by Sylvain Nouvelle. Um, so this book is a sci-fi, I think it's adult, but I might be wrong, I'm not sure. And we follow a group of scientists who found like a really big hand somewhere in the middle of like America and it's just like this really big metal hand but it's like ridiculously big and they're like hmm where'd that come from and it turns out it comes dates like before humans had any kind of technology and there is a task force put together that's um mission is to reassemble this being made out of metal um I listened to audiobook for this and thank you, Hannah, for shout uh, for that shout because she told me to listen to the other book. And this also was book one of my twenty five books I want to read before I'm twenty five. So one down, twenty four to go, and. We're a couple months. We're a month in, so I guess the audiobook is brilliant because it's a full cast and also it's um written as interviews, so you're really not losing anything. Like all of it is acting. Like it was really acting, you know. It wasn't like reading our book. It was acting. The audiobook was so so good. I was really impressed, and I just was transformed into the story. I requested the second book on my Libby app as soon as I could. I thought the storytelling itself was really interesting as well. I really liked the story. I found it fascinating and like all the characters were so unique and distinct and I am really impressed how much it got me to care about the characters and about the story despite the fact that it was like one degree of separation I guess because it was interviews so someone was like interviewing them so it was never their emotion inside but I think that's because the actors did such a good job I was really really impressed yeah this is a great sci-fi really really interesting if you prefer more like 
urban sci-fi, like, you know, low sci-fi. I don't know if sci-fi also categorizes itself similarly to fantasy, um, but I would say it's not like a high, a high space opera. It's like, um, at least for now, it's more like low fantasy. We're discovering there is alien life, all of that. Super, super fascinating. I love this book. I think, did I give it five? I gave it 4.5 stars. I don't know, I was so stingy this month with five stars, it's insane. Uh, but I would say it deserved the five. I was really impressed, I would recommend it, and it was a great time. Then I read Across Green Grass Fields by Shauna Maguire, which is a short story or like a novella. It's part of the Wayward Children series by Shauna Maguire, and in this series, we follow children who went through doors to different worlds and now they've come back and it's kind of them coping with that or we also sometimes visit them as they visit the world and this was a case of us seeing the world so we follow a young girl who runs away from school one day and goes through a portal and she goes into this world full of like centaurs and that kind of magical creatures in this world when it, whenever a human comes and uh, they have like a very important task to do and they're the hero it, this is book six so i read all of the ones that came out i think i quite enjoyed this one i didn't love all of this book in this uh, series but at this one i did quite enjoy i gave it four stars i think it was really standalone as well so if you wanted to read just this one if because it sounds fun um they definitely could because you don't really need to know that much it doesn't connect to any of their books it doesn't connect to any of their other characters i don't know i really enjoyed it i thought it was full of adventure whimsy beauty had a good message and i enjoyed all of it so a good one like i'm happy i read that one so next up i read the ivies by alexa dawn which is a ya thriller and it's also a new release i think it came out in may maybe and this one is by alexa dawn who's a fellow booktuber slash author tuber and i really like her video so i decided to check out her book i mean i read some of her other book as well in this one we follow a posh private school where there's a group of four girls, four or five, five girls who are known as the Ivies. So they're the most competitive girls in the school and they want to get into top Ivy school, Ivy League schools, um, and they will do anything to get in. And then there's a murder and it's all about solving the murder. I really, really, really enjoyed this book. I thought it was such a great fast-paced thriller. I felt like sucked in, couldn't stop reading, just so well paced. Overall, I really, really did enjoy it. I actually gave it five stars and like devoured this book. So if you're looking for a really fast-paced, engaging thriller, the ending was a bit stupid and I was like, please, like what kind of motive is that? That was a bit ridiculous. Not gonna lie, I was a bit disappointed. But all the way till the final review, I was really, really having a good time, really impressed, really didn't know what was going um, because the ending was stupid. Anyway, uh, I just really enjoyed it. So I would really recommend this actually. Like I said, it definitely doesn't get enough clouds. And I have a video about this plan, so maybe keep an eye out if you want to learn more of my reasons for why you should read this book. Maybe you should subscribe. And if you're counting, the 11th book I read was Ace of Spades by Farida Abike Inide. So this is another YA thriller about another posh independent school and something bad starts happening. I don't know, it's crazy. Um, so this one we follow two black students in all white school. Otherwise, it's like a very posh independent school and they get threatening um, texts from ACES, which is like an anonymous gossip girl type account and it threatens to reveal all of their secrets. So I did a dedicated review for this one because it was a brand new release in June, so it just came out very recently if you want to check it out. But I really like this book. I think it was such a good thriller in terms of building suspense, but then also having you at the edge of your seat for the whole time. I was so stressed towards the end. Not towards the end. Halfway through the book, I became so stressed. I just had this pit in my stomach, just like hoping and praying the characters don't get messed over. And knowing that I probably will, and knowing anyone they go to help for help is probably gonna be evil. And it's just like a whole thing. But yeah, I really, really enjoyed this one. If you enjoyed the tagline, Gossip Girl meets Get Out, then you should definitely check it out because that's literally what it is. It's Gossip Girl meets Get Out. And it was very, very interesting. I really enjoyed it. I think the offer was brilliant and it was the, the her debut i think which is even more impressive so yeah highly recommend that one okay well those are all the books that i read 11 i'm pretty proud let me know how many books you read 
What was your favorite? What was your least favorite? It's a very hard question because I read a lot of good books this month, but Jasmine Frog was the last one I finished technically, um, so it's fresh in my mind of how much I enjoyed it, but a lot of them were really good. The Ivies you should definitely check out, there's definitely something in the air about those independent schools this summer, isn't there? Um, but yeah, let me know which book you read and enjoyed, I would love to hear it. Let me your least favourite as well, so I know those two you liked. If you enjoyed the video, if you could like, comment, subscribe, that really helped me out and I really appreciate it. But that's it from me and I'll see you in my next one. Bye!